Hi guys, so I'd like to talk about my GC project, uh, take you for a tour around it, show it working and um, go around the back and, and have a look at some of the, the guts behind the scenes. Um, so first of all a disclaimer, uh, a couple of things, one this is not likely to become an open source DIY based uh, kit, there's a lot going on, it um, requires a whole bunch of specialist tools. Uh, it's only designed for my seat, it's not going to work for anybody else's seat um, and also it's quite dangerous. Um, those servos that are on it and can output a lot of torque and move really quickly and I've seen at least on some of the early prototypes I was playing with uh, it could easily break a rib if something went wrong or you had it dialed up too high etc. So that said um, there's a bunch of enterprising folks around around the world who have uh, built their own and I've learnt stuff from them and uh, I hope by sharing this anybody else who's masochistic enough to go down this path um, might help them, allow, help them along the way. Um, there's a bunch of little tips and tricks and things and where to get parts and what to do with things like grub screws etc that you're going to learn. Um, so yeah, hopefully can short circuit some hours for some people. Uh, there's been a ton of hours gone into this. If you think this is a way of um, you know, saving time and effort compared to a commercial GC project, no, um, just go get the commercial one. However, if you're into in engineering and um, you really like the idea of designing and building something yourself, then absolutely uh, this is a pretty cool project. So. All that fun disclaimer stuff out of the way. Um, this isn't quite working fully just yet. Um, I've got a bit of a problem in that the belts are slipping, so I've got some parts on the way from AliExpress uh, a couple of weeks. Hopefully, that should be resolved. So, yeah, let's talk about the actual G seat itself, or you know, the, the power pack I've got on the back, as I call it, and the flaps. Um, what's going on here, and why is it so awesome? So. Uh, I've had in the background uh, a set of Corsa running. Um, I wish Competenzione had uh, had an AI driver because you could show that. Um, it's probably got the best physics output of anything at the moment. Um, but we'll make do with the set of Corsa. Um, so what's going on here is I've mapped uh, through some feedback um, the lateral G's and a little bit of the longitudinal G's or acceleration deceleration. Uh, into the servo motors. So um, what's happening is as you turn right in a corner in a real car, um, you're pushed by g-forces into the left hand side of the car. Um, you can't actually feel the g-forces up to a point. Um, what you're really feeling is getting squished up against the left hand side of the seat and um, harnesses etc. So that's what a g-seat does in reverse. Um, instead of you getting pushed into the seat, it's pushing into you, which is creating that pressure. Uh, it's highly reactive. Um, as you're seeing these things moving away, um, we'll have a composite right now on screen. Um, you can see as they're coming up to the corner and there's like all these little movements going into the corner, suddenly this starts moving and vibrating as the car's skipping across the surface and touching curbs. Um, you feel all that through the panels. Uh, even down to the point of, say, you're coming out of the corner and uh, hitting the traction control and the rear end's biting and squishing and biting and squishing, you'll feel that through the panels. It's not just a very, it's not a subtle feeling at all. Like, it's, it's all there um, to, a, to a point that you actually really have to turn down the smoothing because it, it might be a bit much. Um, we've got lateral mixed in as well. So, oh, sorry, longitudinal Gs, acceleration or surge as it might be called. Um, so for instance when you're changing gears you feel it, you feel that little snap of the gear change through through the seat, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, uh, functionally it's awesome. It's not quite holding up to load because one, one of the big problems with G-seats and which I think everybody, myself included, completely underestimates when you look at them is how much load that's placed against these um, from everything in the system. So if you're coming down into say a right hand corner um, and you're on the brake pedal, well you're pushing 50 kilos give or take against the brake pedal if you've got a proper um, 
race pedals in there. Um, so that 50 kilos is getting travelled up through into your legs and your back and then you've got the load from your steering wheel and you're pushing into it and if you've got a direct drive wheel and you've got that turned up high you've got a ton of force going in against that and the motor is trying to push against that and everything in the way if it's not going to hold up it's going to skip or break and slip and various different things so um, key learning this stuff has to be bulletproof uh, I'm pretty close now um, and uh, I think in a couple of weeks it'll be solved so yeah um, let's go around the back have a look at what's going on on the back of the seat um, yeah, cool uh, let's look around at the back of the seat here and this is where all uh, the business end of the seat is um, this thing here uh, nicknamed the power pack uh, got a lot of power bolts onto the back of the seat all in one unit um, <clears throat> so one of the learnings I made early on in uh, some of the original prototypes is like I talked about before there's a lot of force going through all of this system and uh, when that force is there stuff starts flexing and shifting relative to each other and I wanted to make the, the mounting a lot simpler and remove some of that force or the force bending out of the equation so what I did is designed um, this, this bracket here. Commercially they solved this by using a honking great seat that's all metal and solid as hell, weighs a ton uh, and you know it doesn't move. Um, problem with these fiberglass seats is they bend and twist and flex and they're just not good at all to, to mount things to. So made up this bracket, designed it up in Fusion 360, uh, sent it off, got a laser cut bent CNC bent so it comes back absolutely perfect and that is what I hang everything off so uh, it bolts onto the back of the seat um, neat little tricks like using 3d printed spaces to, to offset it from the seat get everything nice and solid and tight and then in here I've got um, two X60 ST servo motors if I was to do this again I'd probably go for bigger ones uh, nice and quiet obviously they're sitting here moving away um, they're super fast and quite talky but not talky enough so you need uh, gearboxes so I've got some four to one gearboxes probably would go to something like a six to one or eight to one uh, if it was to do again um, then into the pulleys uh, the belt pulley system out to the shaft that in turn pushes the push rod and in turn pushes the seat. Um, these uh, belts pulley system just are not strong enough. Um, they're a three mil pitch, a 16 mil belt. They really don't work. Um, what's happening is the belt here, when it's under load, is actually expanding slightly. Um, and then the minute it expands, the pinion or well, the pinion pulley um, slips inside and makes a horrible snapping sound and offsets by a couple of degrees and then you just lose you know you lose the effect in the, in the seat so uh, a couple of weeks i'll have some new 5 mil pitch 27 mil units so they're going to look big and solid uh, hopefully that solves the problem otherwise i will go to adopt uh, something like Bury's design where it's got a lever arm set up there. i want to stick with belts because they kind of look cool um, yeah, so that system uh, all seems to be working functionally so far. Um, the other thing I've got to do is, and I, I was expecting these to break earlier, um, they're just a simple little uh, 3D printed arm, 20% uh, infill, four layers, nothing fancy about them, and they're still holding up, which I was quite surprised. So it did make them big and chunky. Um, and that is a through bolt through there between the two push rods um, so that you know it can't snap an edge off. Uh, these, these clamps here, don't buy them. Uh, the grub screws are terrible and it's all soft metal, it's not going to work. Um, so I'm going to use some bigger, thanks Barry, for the design, um, some bigger clamps on here and redesign that arm. Um, it is uh, through bolted here. Um, just to make sure that it's not going to slip relative to the arm. Yeah, um, so that's that's the back of the seat. Uh, in a couple of weeks I'll have uh, these new parts like I talked about before and hopefully that will all be functional. 
Uh, once that's all functional, then it's just the aesthetics of tidying it up. Um, I know this bit in here, this arm here, or the, the sorry, the rod, um, it's only mild steel, so it's flexing a little bit. So I'm going to put another pillow block bearing just to hold it on there. Uh, add some stiffness into the system, and there's a bracket just to hold the, the motors in. I'm going to design that slightly better. Uh, and then finally fix up the metal flat mounting points. Uh, we're just using basic MDF and standard old butt hinges uh, for that. I'll tidy that up and then upholster it and we should be done. So get on with sim racing and, and less building stuff in the garage. Okay, well thanks guys for watching and uh, subscribe for the next installment. Cheers!